and Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about the topic, think it all the way through. <laughs> I feel like I'm telling my child that. I'm telling everyone that. I know. I was thinking about that, too. This is a little preachy, this topic. It kind of is, but we'll we're going to tie it in. We'll make it funny. And we will. And not but preachy. We should walk around. everywhere. Everything that you're doing, especially like my team, did you think this all the way through? <laughs> Maybe that should be the topic. <laughs> did you think this all the way through? <laughs> Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. Sam asks, hello all. I'm curious what people think about land investing in 2019. I have not purchased a course, but I've done about two weeks of research yeah, on my that's own. Good. That's great. And I think I'm ready to get started. That's good. However, one thing that has been daunting me, the bulk of of the information published is several years old. Since then, I'm assuming hundreds of other investors have entered the mix. Looking at the numbers just advertised on landacademy.com, this is for last month, 185,750 offers mailed, and 283 properties purchased is roughly a 0.1% success rate. I have something to say about that too. Uh, has the low barrier to entry created too much competition or overfished the pond? <laughs> Let me know your thoughts. Thank you. And then so, we have one person that already weighed in. So okay if I go and read that? And we have a couple responses here. Okay. Um, but I'll have to say this. I mean, I would encourage you, listener, to go on to landinvestors.com. And, you know, I published two responses here. And I'm going to answer the question, too. So is Jill. Right. We're going to actually spend a couple minutes on this. Right. Um because it's so important. And, well, you know what? Let's hear what they say. Okay. Well, one of the things I want, I just want to personally add is we can really accurately see the data because it's run through our company, the numbers. So I know that that part's accurate. But what's not accurate is what people actually buy and what they post because they often sell properties and don't post it on LandPin. So, so that number is lower than what is real. That but that's point, the one that I, I just put the numbers that we have access to. If you go onto any of our websites or the vast majority of them, there's this little thing that pops up that says, this is the number of data that our group pulled last month. Right. This is the number of units that we mailed Purchase. out collectively right. on O2O. And these are the estimated number of transactions that were completed. And it's always around 1%. There's a, but it's trailing because you don't, Purchase and sell a property. That, true. Purchase a property in one month, and so it's overlapping. That's a good point. So it's misleading, and I'm actually making some changes. That's uh, a good based, point. Based on this, based on yeah, this it is confusing. Like we have a bunch of new members, so that are starting in January. So they're really sending out a lot of mail right yeah. now, which is great. What's well, going to be two and three months down the road by the time they buy it, post it, and get caught up here. So you're right. That and is. Jill and I are doing commercial real estate deals now. Commercial right. land real estate deals. So it's far. We don't do. A three percent, one to three percent response. That's true. That the rural vacant, super successful rural vacant land people do here. So it's true. I mean, I don't want to make this a big numbers thing. Actually, I really do, but I'm not going to because Jill hates it and nobody uh, nobody likes it. <laughs> I think that was for, enough. Like, six people like it, and that's it. <laughs> that was good. That was enough. No more numbers. Just trust me. Yeah, it totally works. And the fish is not, <laughs> the pond is not overfished. Okay. So let's hear what Alex says. So Alex responds. It depends. If you mail counties that zillions of people mail to, you may be disappointed with either the hit rate or the numbers involved. Ask yourself the same question about other real estate investors. Why do tons of people buy and sell slash hold houses all over the country? There's enough for everyone, but it takes a little trial and error. But the Land Academy course uh, and buy the, buy the Land Academy course and become a member. It's worth it. That's so sweet. Kevin waited and says, those numbers you just quoted include lower response type investments that Steve and Jill do, such as homes, large ranches, and infill lots. As Luke said, getting still getting deals from mailed offers. Yep, that's so true from how I mean, many. There's, there's, there's a lot you can say on this. Exactly. That's what a lot of our members do. Like they'll do like a, like Luke, Luke Smith's a, a, a prime example. He'll hit the area hard and then do no mail and sit back for six months and work those transactions. Yeah. Hit it hard, six months. So I'm not selling anything here mm -hmm. at all. We don't do this show to sell stuff. 
to answer uh, but questions. And I'll tell you the straight truth. By sending offers to owners, blind offers to owners for in real estate, for any product type, in any place in this country works. It's all about pricing. Right. There are about eight to 10 counties right now, and it, and it hasn't been this way for a very long time, actually ever, that are a little bit oversaturated with mailers because of Mark Podolsky's group, uh, the Land Geek, because he coined this phrase in it for two years ago, he coined it, I'll let you in on the secret counties. Right. And so uh, I, outside of avoiding those co- counties, you're going to do fantastic. Exactly. And it's really easy to ask somebody in their group, which is what are those 10 counties? Right. What are the secret? There's no secret That's what counties. we all want to know. What are the secret counties? Because that's where we're going to stay away from. <laughs> It's, not, it's a reverse effect. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Like, you guys can all have those secret counties. There are no secret and they're, counties. I'll tell you, they're all out west. They're all desert counties. If you choose some county yeah. in New Jersey and price it right, you're going to kill it. Exactly. You're going to do fantastic. And I just, I don't say New Jersey. I mean... Uh, Anywhere. Yeah. Thank you. Today's topic, <laughs> think this all the way through. This is the meat of the show. This actual, I wrote this this title because mm-hmm. of our number three child who's 15 and a half. He's making mistakes. He's our number three <laughs> and last child. No, or not last. Well, yeah. Yeah, last. Our, our number three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't mean last. I mean like... Is the three there of, will be no what more. I mean is three of three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Were you questioning this? No. No, there will want, be no more. I just I've, you know, heard there might be listeners who say, well, what about number five? And how about number eight? How's that number eight? No. Oh, there's only number three in that That's set. it. <laughs> three of three. So, <laughs> not to go into detail about this, but anybody who's ever had children or nephews or nieces or extended family or even friends of, you know, who have children, you know that a 15-year-old just doesn't think about stuff the way that an adult does. <laughs> and that's fine. It's part of growing up. For whatever reason, uh, children, well, I, we all know that children's brains, grow, they're, they're growing, and they just don't think stuff through. <laughs> you funny. as an adult... Have the luxury of thinking things all the way through. Yeah. I always. And having some experiences to pull from so you kind of have some idea. I always start with the very, very, very end Mm -hmm. and work my way backwards. And that's what that phrase really means. And Joe was right right at the beginning, like, God, it sounds preachy. You know, are you going to tell us what to do? (laughs) No, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just saying, I'm just making you aware of this. Yeah. We have a very, very, very successful, well, one member right now who's, who's come into a tremendous amount of really recent success, and he's very vocal. I'm not going to n- mention his name, and we talk to him all the time. He keeps setting these goals. Yeah. For whatever reason, he thinks it all the way through for a year. Mm-hmm. Sets a goal, hits it. Next year, sets a goal, hits it. Right. And They're he, annual he goals. exceeds it. For him, it's an annual thing. For me, I always think out a little farther. I try right. to, but... But I think I'm a lot older than him, too. I'm just trying to get through today. <laughs> I'm trying to get th- just trying to get through this show. <laughs> yes. That's really, that's really all. <laughs> if that happens, it's a win-win here. So this can be the sh- shortest show ever. Uh, I have some stuff to say. Can- oh. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> My point is just start with the end and go backwards. Go ahead, jump okay. some coffee here. Yeah, please do. <laughs> Have some more coffee because that's exactly what you need right now. <laughs> so I didn't give you that d- double dolted, jolted, whatever caffeine that is because that stuff scares me. I haven't had that yet. <laughs> so I was thinking about, okay, this is also flip talk week, right? So I was tying this into thinking all the way through and flip talk week. And I was thinking, thinking all this, this all the way through to me is, um, also setting yourself up to make good decisions. You know, if you've got this end goal, whether it's a three month goal or a six month goal or a year goal or a five year goal, I think that's kind of how you roll is like a, you're like the five year goal. And honestly, I'm more like a, um, I do a lot of short term goals, um, more than I do bigger, bigger goals. I kind of do more like three months, six months goals. Cause I've, I've, hit, oh, really? Uh huh. That's kind of how I, how it makes it easiest for me, how I process it. Um, but the other thing I was going to say is like, as you're, as you're setting this goals and you're thinking this all the way through, um, I'm going to get kind of philosophical, but philosophical, that's it. What kind of business culture do you want? So for me, that's part of thinking this all the way through. I'm thinking about land Academy and I'm thinking about what we're prepping for right now. And this is where this is coming from for me is 
we're prepping for House Academy and we're prepping for a new show. So I've got to really sit down, think this all the way through and, and, and make sure I have the right people, the right tools in place and it goes the way I want it to go. That's where the business culture for me comes in. Yeah. I mean, you have to sit and think. Like if you're going to plan out a new show, for instance, that's a great example. That's a, an example uh, near and dear to our heart. Right. It's not so much buying own real estate, buying and selling real estate, because that's like a machine for us. Right. It's just running in the background constantly. And we have the right people in the right place doing that. You know, these shows and sometimes these deals, or let's say these mailers just take on a life of their own. Right. Like Luke Smith, his full philosophy is if you just get tons and tons of mail, into the uh, tons of offers into the mail, mm-hmm. that will kind of lead you down this path sure. of acquisition and sales. Well, we've and said so that. that. That's his thing. Um, other m- members are really surgically strike from a mailer standpoint, like only types of this type of property, let's say large, expensive commercial property on main roads in the Midwest. You right. know, so they handle it that way and they let that path, they choose that path. Right. And they know the, the exit on that. Right. It's, uh, reselling it for uh, profit as fast as possible. So with a show, though, it's a little bit more complicated. Like, all right, let's say the show goes great. You launch the show. You get everything you want. Do you follow Do you really want to write a book? Do you really want to do a live event? Like, what do you want? Mm-hmm. You know, what's time consuming? Where's the best bang for the buck? You know, so oh, yeah. when it comes to that kind of stuff, you really have to think it through. It's true. I was thinking for our listeners, this is new, like the person who wrote in the question. So he's thinking about getting into this business. Well, first of all, and he's got two weeks of research in. I think that's great. Keep going. More research, the better. You can't, you don't want to jump into this. You want to think it all the way through. You don't want to jump in flippantly. You want to make sure that this is something you understand and you can handle and and you want to do it, by the way. Um, And where do you see yourself? What's the end goal? Why would you even be doing this? Are you doing this because you have a lot of free time? Probably not. (laughs) You know, seriously. I agree. <laughs> so that's part of thinking this all the way through yeah. for me. Have you thought this relationship all the way through, Joe? No, I have not. <laughs> again, again, I'm I'm really short term. I just want to get through the next 30 it's days next and then day. the next 90 days and maybe just through today. I thought it all the way through. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Guys think relationships through, I think, more than women do. Oh. Women feel their way through stuff. When do you make a decision? All right. I have a guy question. Yeah. Side topic. So you meet, you meet someone who you think this could work long term. Uh, when do you make that decision? Is it pretty quickly? You go, you know what? She's not crazy. We've had three dinners together. This could work. Or is it like three months or three years? Depends on your age and, and uh, all that stuff. And, oh. you know, the, when you're real young, you have, um, Really short-term goals with women. (laughs) I understand. Like hours. When you get a little older, you know, and you're just tired of that, and you kind of got it out of your system. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, there's it goes in phases. You want to know the truth about this? Yeah, I really do. You can weed out probably 50 to 70% of all the problems that are down the road in the first date. Really? Well, maybe second. It depends on how much they're lying. But you can, oh. like at my age, I can see it in 30 seconds. But when you're that's like good. 25 or 30. Yeah. That's here's true. Here's a problem. And it happened. this ties into real estate. When you want something and you see yourself in a situation, you tend to start to see things that aren't there. Oh. Like you see see these attributes maybe that, that this person has. Uh, this girl has that just aren't there. I'm sure women do that too. Yeah. Women probably say some version of, well, yeah, he's, he's like this, but I'm sure after about a year I can change him. Yeah. I can, I can get this guy to come around. Yeah. He's a jerk, but he looks good. <laughs> or maybe I can. Get not him you, to, but you know what I mean? Girls yeah. say stuff like that. Or he can, I can get him to not be a jerk for after. If I just get a hold, get in there. My, if right. I just get in there. Oh, he'll want little, kids. A little far. He'll want yeah. kids when I'm done with him. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> And the guy, so what a guy like, no. says yeah. after you find out she, if she's not crazy <gasps> after that, then there's something of something to actually, then what a guy says is this. Wow. Okay, great. I hope she never changes. If she's not oh, crazy, no. I really hope that That's she, sweet. you know, 
like just stays. A, you you have, haven't changed since the day I met you. Thank Actually, you. it's got you've gotten. Uh, it's all good. Thank you. It's all positive. But women are, you know, men and women are really different. But I liked how you tied it to real estate, but just true. Because I have people right now, they're submitting deals for me on my on the Land Academy deal funding site. And they'll actually say, I've had just a couple last week, they said, I hope I'm not seeing something that's not there. So I'm trusting you to kind of look at this and tell me. Because that can happen sometimes. You're so excited about a deal. You're like, oh, my gosh. I, I it, But you have, to, you have to be really careful. Make sure you do your due diligence. Make sure it has all the four A's and, and uh, price right. Because sometimes we can tend to get so excited that we're like, whoops. We're so excited to make enough money and yeah. just get a, make a business out of this so you True. can leave your job or change your situation or you're just, you know, I understand yeah. that. I've said this before 50 times on the show. I had a big problem with that when I first started out. I was dying to get out of the work, the job that I had. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't, fortunately, I, I the first two deals I did were, I walked out with almost a million bucks first two land deals they were multi-unit land deals right so i don't know if that's fortunate or just i don't know i made a good decision i don't know it's like walking into a casino (laughs) no it's not (laughs) but here we are it worked (laughs) we got it (laughs) well you've done it again you spent another 15 minutes or so listening to the land academy show join us next time for the episode called wholesale versus improvement equity and we answer your questions post it on our online community landinvestors.com. It's free. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. I jumped right on the script there. No, it's good. So what I meant, tomorrow we're going to talk about creating equity. There's two ways to create equity. And this, we get this question a lot. This is not the first time we've done this topic, but as time goes on, we learn more and we need to share it. You can create equity by buying a property that's you know, if you have a hundred thousand dollar property and you buy it for eighty thousand dollars, you just created twenty thousand dollars of equity for yourself. Right. Or if you buy a hundred thousand dollar property and you improve it, you do some stuff to it, and it's worth one hundred and twenty grand. Now you created twenty thousand dollars of equity. I'm oversimplifying, but that's what tomorrow's show is about. Guess which way we like. Exactly. <laughs> Guess which way you don't have to leave your desk at all. <laughs> wherever you are watching or wherever you are listening, please rate us there. We, we are, are Stephen Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. Mm-hmm.